I'm Bob Graham. That is Michael, and I did not get to ask you how you say that. Is it Haustel? Haustel, you pronounce it. Haustel, okay. The, the T is in there. And Michael, I'm going to give you the best and most embarrassing introduction I can give anyone. I was on the phone with my mother about 25 minutes ago, and I said, hey, I'm doing a webinar. You have the information, and if you want to get on, go ahead. And I said, but if you're doing other stuff, no problem. And her reply was, I love Michael. <laughs> so no higher praise could be bestowed upon a human being than my mother saying you're more important to her than her son so with that i'm real excited that that is high praise and michael is a great guy michael has helped me with a whole bunch of aches and pains over the years and i am thrilled that he's going to help us figure out how to make our home offices more ergonomical more safe, more enjoyable by just coming up with some real simple household hacks would be the way I'd describe it. So Michael, why don't you tell us about how you got to this place where you're actually going to help us and what you do for a living so we know that you have credibility. You're not just some guy on the, on a webinar for no reason. Um, okay, well, I'm a, uh, a greeter at Walmart. No, just, <laughs> um, uh, been, uh, <laughs> That's good. You bring in the funny early. <laughs> <laughs> I've been a uh, body worker, manual therapist, massage therapist for 20 some years. Um, my focus is not as a massage therapist. My focus is not doing massage. So I, that's why I say I do manual therapy, which means I do hands on work to try to help people with their issues, help things move better uh, and figure out why things are the way they are. So. Uh, a big part of what this is about is that last bit about figuring out why things are the way they are. So life hacks are simply what are things that you can do to make life easier? Because there's a lot of simple changes you can make that uh, get rid of pains. So give us some examples, Michael, of things, because I know my wife is upstairs and she's got a piece of wood over the back, under the back two legs of a chair she's using at a makeshift desk. Why is that working so well for her? Well, when you sit in a chair, uh, because chairs are, are either, say you're in a dining room chair, which is just flat, mm -hmm. then the, the, the seat is parallel to the ground. Correct. If you're in an office chair, the seats tend to be bold. So they, the effect is that when you sit in, either this flat regular chair or an office chair with a without a flat seat, it forces your pelvis to roll backwards. Okay. Okay. Which is bad, I take it. Which is bad because it also flattens out the curve in your back. Okay. All right. Your pelvis is rolling backwards and you can just feel it. If you're just sitting in your chair, you just roll your pelvis backwards. So your belly button goes backwards. Okay. You'll lose the curve in your low back. Okay. I never thought so, about it, but you are correct. So lumbar support is basically in there to push your low back forward to put the curve back in. That's being lost because of the chair. Okay. Okay. So what putting something under the back legs of the chair does is it tilts the chair forward. Okay. Right. So now the chair is tilted forward, which gets your pelvis to roll forward by virtue of gravity. It doesn't require any effort. It's just okay. sitting in the chair, and now your pelvis rolls forward. You can get a similar effect if you just slide forward to the edge of your chair, so your pelvis rolls forward. So you're right, just about to fall off the chair. Oh, you'll feel oh. your low back relax. Yes, right, and and you'll feel your shoulders relax. You'll feel your neck relax, and gravity's doing all the work for you. I would encourage those of you who are participating in this. Uh, I'd love to. I just did what he described by sitting at the edge of my seat, and everything loosened up. So this is this is real stuff. And I also want to say, Michael, I don't know if you can see the comments, but Kathleen says you look great. Haven't seen you in twenty-ish years. So um, I, I I don't know, uh, it, Kathleen, and the last name's with an R. I'll, I'll leave it there. I'm not going to give you a last name. We can talk about later. But you've got fans from, you know, from my mother to people who haven't seen you in 20 years on this. So <laughs> we're touching a nerve. So with the with the chair support, the piece of wood across is just a two by four or a one by two. 
what is a situation that someone would need that? Or is that for everyone? That's pretty much for, well, okay. Anything I tell you is going to be something you have to try and see what works. So is it a two by four? Is it a one by four? Is it a sliver of paint? What do you need to get you to the right place? Everybody's different. Okay. So there's no one size fits all for ergonomics. Okay. So give us some other hacks that we can try to see what fits us. Um, well, if you look at the, if you're sitting at a, at a computer and you have a keyboard, um, uh, even if you, if you've got a laptop, get a separate keyboard. Okay. The table is too high. Just for, unless you're really tall, of course, Bob, you're really tall. I, I was going to say for the rest of you, but I'm yeah. six, six. So it's six, actually six, fine. But even then I would say, get, get a separate keyboard. And the point is to lower the keyboard down. Now you see people. You in mean like that? Yes. So you just okay. you that keyboard. And what I do is I put a pillow in my lap, a bed pillow in my lap, and I set the keyboard on that. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. So I don't have a office desk with a keyboard drawer and all these kind of things, but how high the keyboard has to be really depends upon the length of your body, the length of your upper arm from shoulder to elbow versus the length of your torso. So how close do your elbows sit to your lap? Mine sit really low, so I'm kind of a monkey on that. My elbows, my upper arms are really long relative to my torso, so I need a keyboard very low. I basically need it in my lap to okay. get the, the, the right height so that when my hands are on the keyboard, my shoulders relax. Now, you can feel the difference. Just put your hands in your lap and just notice what your neck and your shoulders feel like. Okay, now put your hands up on the table. And notice what oh, your, yeah. your shoulders yeah. feel. You know, you immediately raise your shoulders up some. You tighten your neck up a little bit. So okay. lower the keyboard. So if you don't have a keyboard, get one. You know, right now it's just, you know, you can order it online and have it delivered. Uh, and a Bluetooth one. You don't want to have the be dragging the wire around. But yeah, right. they're all Bluetooth now anyway, I guess. Right. Um, and let me just throw in, Michael, because I want, I want this to be more interactive and I forgot to say it. If you want to ask us a question, all you have to do is type into the chat function. You'll see it down in the middle of your screen at the bottom. Just type your questions. I will be happy to ask Michael your questions. If we have someone who's known Michael for more than 20-ish years, love to get that information as well. We're already up to 20. Do I hear 25, 25, 30, 30, 30? Do I have 35? <laughs> See, I told you I'd make it fun. <laughs> so, so Michael, the whole idea being when we have our keyboard on whatever surface we're going to work on, we want it to be a 90 degree angle from our upper arm. Is that correct? I, I, or mm -hmm. No, D don't, don't use angles. Don't use that kind of thing. Do what works. You okay. need to figure it out. There isn't any, your, your wrist should be at, you know, your wrist should be at this angle or whatever is somebody tells okay. you, your elbows. What makes you the most comfortable? comfortable? What allows okay. you to sit there for that extended period and not have your neck tighten up, not have your shoulders tighten up? Okay, great. That's what you're looking for. So this is self-discovery. I mean, I can't tell you what's right for you. I can guide you uh, to say, try this, try that. But then okay. you have to try it. What are what are some other common issues you see with office setup with people, and what can they do to accommodate them? Um, well, the the screen rule of thumb for the screen is you want it to be the middle of the screen to be a little bit below eye level. Okay. So a little bit being two inches or six inches. Oh, uh, an inch. Uh, okay. I, I, okay. Again, play with it. No, right, right. I'm sorry. I'm trying to be yeah. as exact as possible, yeah. and I know you can't be. That, that's a great question. That's a great okay. question. So, yeah, by a little bit, I mean, you know, maybe an inch. Okay. Um, uh, if you're at a laptop, it means you need to raise your laptop up on something. Now, what we used to raise laptops up on back before there were laptops was phone books, but nobody has them anymore. So, okay. you know, books, you know, or you can stack up some iPads or something if you don't have books. Uh, <laughs> something that'll work. You know, put put something, load something good on your Kindle and put it on there. So, it, uh, you know, load a phone book on your Kindle and stack up your Kindles. 
Okay. And then how far should my monitor be from me in an ideal world? Depends on how good your eyes are. Uh, for some people, they, they need glasses for um, looking at a computer for that distance. Now, I actually have my glasses off. I do wear glasses. I have my glasses off because I'm looking at a computer. I see better at that distance with my glasses off. That's about my limit. I mean, I take my glasses off to read. So it really depends upon your eyes. Okay. So you need to find what makes your, allows your eyes to be relaxed. So if you start feeling eye strain, um, you need to change it somehow. So if you find yourself going like this, you know, that's no good, right? So okay. you need to figure that out. So there, but it, it means play with it. So move it closer, move it further away. Notice, do your eyes relax? If your eyes tighten up, you'll feel your face tighten up some. You'll feel okay. your eyes start to strain. You'll start to squint or you'll, you'll, you'll start to go like this a lot. Okay. Um, that so makes you sense. Need to, you need to figure it out. There, there's no, here's the right way for everybody because everybody's different. Okay, so common symptoms that might lead someone to consider how their monitor is placed, whether it's in the sun or out of the sun, there's a glare. What are some of those things? A headache, sore eyes, um, stress headaches. I, I'm just throwing possibilities yeah. uh, out. Headaches can certainly be a big part of it. A lot of things can lead to headaches. So, you know, the, the position of your, your laptop, the position of your pelvis, all these things can lead to headaches. So. Um, you know, or you're eating bad food. Um, lots of things can lead to headaches. So I don't, I don't want to say if you're getting headaches, the problem is your monitor. But it's always something to consider. Okay. So, but headaches are certainly going to be a, a big one. Um, uh, eye strain. So do your eyes feel like they're tired? Is it hard to focus? Are you tightening up your jaw? Okay. Um, things like that. Just check in with your face. Does your face feel tight? Um, so, and on the, the, the eyes are really important. What your eyes are doing affects your whole body. So, uh, rule of thumb, and this is what I tell all of my clients. If you're sitting at a computer every 10 minutes, look around the room. Okay. You don't have to get up, just look around the room. Every 20 minutes, get up and walk around the room. And every hour, go for a walk, get away from the computer. Okay. But, but. These things are important because what your eyes are doing affects your whole body. So at, um, on that same line, it, say you're, you're, at a, uh, you're on a treadmill. Don't watch TV. Okay. If you're on an exercise bike, don't watch TV. Don't lock your eyes on something. Okay. Uh, your, the movement of your eyes is reflected in the muscles at the top of your neck. So you can, if you want to test this, um, uh, look hard to the right with your eyes, but not your head. Just hold your eyes to the right, and you'll start feeling your neck tighten up at the top. Oh, yeah. Okay? Cool. That's because yeah. when you move your eyes, those muscles engage. They're trying okay. to turn your head. They want you, When you move your eyes, your head should go with them. So that, that's just a reflexive thing. You're born with it. There's nothing you can do about it. The only way to look to the right and not turn your head is to engage muscles that turn your head the other way. It's the okay. only way to do it. So it's a hardwired thing. So okay. you, what your eyes are doing is really important. So you want to make, that's why I say look around the room every 10 minutes. It just relaxes your eyes. If you find it's hard to focus, look as far away as you can. Okay. So look out the window and it'll actually relax the muscles that adjust your lens. Okay. The lens in your actual the eyes, not your, the lens. Yeah, no, no, it, it doesn't do much to your glasses. Oh, look, my glasses are relaxing. I was uh, trying to be witty there, Michael. Well, that was good. That was good. <laughs> thank you. Appreciate thank you. <laughs> I knew the answer. I just wanted to, you know, show you I was paying attention. <laughs> I'm glad you knew the answer. <laughs> that's, that's good. I'm glad to hear so, it. so what are some of the other things I should be thinking about in my home office, whether it's a dedicated space, which I'm blessed enough to have, mm -hmm. or I'm in front of the... Uh, kids on the dining room table while they're doing their schoolwork and I'm working at the head of the table or I'm on the sofa or I'm buried in a closet on a stool that I found that no one's using or you know we have all these we, none of us really expected to have a home office like this yeah. so what are some of the other issues um 
keep in mind that when you put your hands in front of you to do anything, whether it's sitting at a, putting your fingers on a keyboard or anything you're doing, you're now moving your center of gravity forward. So if you say, put your hand straight out in front of you and you'll feel you're, you have to adjust your, your back. Your back muscles right. will engage to keep you from falling forward. So you, what you're looking for in any of these situations is balance. So you want it to be that, that, that when you're, you're, you're sitting, you're not using some small group of muscles to keep you from collapsing. You want to be as balanced as you can throughout that whole period. So that means doing things like moving your feet forward and back, forward or back a little bit. I mean, just notice in your chair, if you put your feet more uh, uh, an inch forward or an inch backwards, it makes a change in the muscular engagement in your back or in your neck, just by moving your feet a little bit. You can okay. feel the difference. So it, it, it's, it's not a matter of, oh, my feet are straight out in front of me or my feet are way behind me. Play with small changes. Okay. So if, if you're sitting on a stool in the closet, well, move your feet a little bit and move around a lot. Don't get stuck in one position. And just like I say, every 10 minutes, look around. Every 20 minutes, walk around. Don't lock yourself into these positions. No. Okay. If you're sitting, if you're sitting on the couch watching television and your hands are in your lap, it's completely different. Okay. Uh, now, if you if you've got your the remote in one of your hands, so you've got your remote and you're holding your remote up like this the whole time because you can't stop playing with your the buttons. Well, you're going to start getting strain into your neck because you're holding your hand out in front of you. Okay, that so makes sense. Then you need to pay more attention to how you're sitting. But if your hands are in your lap and you just kind of collapse there like a, a potato, then be comfortable. Do you have collapsed potatoes often in your life, Michael? All the time. Okay. What do you do with those? Do you bake with them or? Um, uh, the problem with baking <laughs> with them is that they just collapse more. Okay. Fair enough. And, and they, they, you know, and I don't recommend microwaving. That's okay. Right. Okay. Fair enough. So with my mouse, if I have a mouse and I'm reaching to get it on the mouse pad, that's a potential area of concern. I've yeah, seen that. All. The, the mouse, the, the mouse is problematic. So, so, uh, um, the mice well, usually are problematic just for the record. Yes. You know, and there's different, and, and I, and don't do the sticky traps. This is, <laughs> they, they die of thirst. Um, uh, if you've got a mouse, um, the ideal place for the mouse is that if you just take your arm and just let it hang to your side, okay, with your elbow bent, so say you've got your hand on the mouse, that's basically the position of your arm you want it when you're doing the mouse. The okay. position of the mouse is further out, so your, your arm is out here somewhere. I mean, tilt that right. down a bit. So, so the mouse, well, that doesn't really help. The, uh, the, so the mouse is further out. Right. So. Uh um, if you if you've got a keyboard that has the numbers on the side, so that makes the keyboard a lot wider. Right. And even if you've got it on a, a, a keyboard tray, it pushes the mouse further out to the side. Okay. Then, if you just take your arm, just take your arm like you've got your hand on a mouse, and start moving your elbow out to the side, you'll feel this tighten up up here. Yep. Okay. So ideally, if you let your arm hang to the side. Your shoulder, your deltoid doesn't tighten up as much, and it doesn't put as much strain. The deltoid is going to put strain up in your trapezes, up into your neck. Help me, Michael. I failed anatomy because I never took it. This, this muscle here, big mass, muscle right here. Yeah, this this massive thing right here. <laughs> <laughs> it must be yours, not mine. <laughs> is the deltoid okay? So it it just kind of wraps around your shoulder. It's, okay. it's the power muscle of your shoulder. Okay. For doing this. Yep. Okay? okay. Then you've got a smaller muscle that does it, but just think about the fabric of that muscle reaches up into your neck through your, your traps, people, the trapezius, so people say my traps. So that basically it's this thin muscle that just covers a large part of your upper back and comes up onto your head. And it just creates a strain up into your head when you're holding your elbow out to the side like that. Makes so sense. ideally, you want the elbow to be hanging by your side. The problem is that's where the keyboard is. So, uh, you can put, you can have the keyboard on the on the uh, keyboard tray and the mouse up on the tabletop, 
so you can have the mouse here. And frankly, my sense of it, I don't use a mouse anymore. I've just got, you know, uh, I, I don't spend that much time at a computer. So it's a, um, the, what it seems to me, and this is just my sense of it, that the, it, the, it'd be better to have the mouse on the table and your elbow by your side than the mouse out to the side and your elbow out. Okay, makes so sense. Put the mouse up. I, I'm struck, go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm done, go ahead. No, I was gonna say, I'm starting to sense a trend that is that the human body was not built to work at home at a home office. Would that be an accurate depiction? I don't think the human body was to work at any office, was designed to work at any office, at any setup. So we are asking a lot of our bodies. We're asking we a lot this. of our bodies. I mean, this is not something that, that was uh, designed into the system. So this what is the thing that... Do. What is the thing we need to do with our bodies to reward it or to counteract this at the end of a work day or work period? Or is it that get up and walk for three minutes? I'm glad you asked me that question. And by the way, we did not script this, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did not. Absolutely not. Uh, so before you get to the end of the day, let's start at the beginning of the day. Okay. Okay. Before you get out of bed in the morning, stretch. Like, ah! yeah. yes, just, you know, stretch. Newborn babies stretch. Newborns. So it's not like, oh, you wouldn't believe the day I had. I had to pass through this dark tunnel, and now it's all this brightness, and people are yelling at me and, and putting these awful, scratchy things on me. I mean, newborn babies stretch. So stretching is maintenance. It's not treatment. Don't look at stretching as something, oh, I've had a bad day. I need to stretch. No, I exist. I need to stretch. So my wife does a routine I think you helped her with where I see her doing things with her fingers in the morning in bed and then she does some other stuff. She's got a whole sequence. Are you talking about a more formal set of stretching or are you talking do, about... Do, I'm saying do what feels good. Don't okay. do things that hurt. So I am a, an advocate of the two-second stretch, of holding a stretch for two seconds, not 30. Okay. So when you stretch, hold it for two seconds. Just one, one thousand, two, one thousand, and release it. Okay. You can repeat it, but don't hang out there. Okay. Um, at, but at the very least, just do what you did when you were a kid. I mean, little. You think about little kids. You know, ah, oh, time to get up, and you stretch. I mean, right. why don't you do that anymore? Why did okay. you stop doing that? You know, it, it's just, just at the very least, do that. Now, another thing I suggest before you get out of bed. Uh, and even if you get up, you got to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. Oh, my God. Yeah, roll, your, roll your feet around. So, so you're, you're just you're stretched out on the bed and your feet. This was my feet. OK. You're just doing this with your feet, just rolling around both directions, just like that. What that does, it just pumps the fluid up your legs. So you know how you get up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom and your feet feel like you're walking on pillows. OK, that will change that. OK. You just, you just pumps the fluid out. It's really simple. It's, it's plumbing, right? Okay. <laughs> you're getting lymphatic flow. You're getting blood flow. Just get it moving. So do that. And then in the morning, make sure you stretch at the very least. I spend a couple of minutes stretching before I get okay. out. Unless I really got to go to the bathroom. Then I'll still roll my feet first, get things moving. And then go to the bathroom, come back, finish my stretching. And in bed. Okay. If I have a choice of stretching in when I get up in the morning or doing it in the evening before I go to bed, it sounds like you would advocate the morning. I would, I would say do the morning. Okay. I mean, before you load your body up, so before you start compressing your joints, before you start asking, asking your, your, your tissues to uh, work against gravity, mobilize them. You know, it's like, it's like if you could, uh, um, uh, turn on the oil pump in your car before you started the engine, just to get the oil flowing before the engine started. Okay, makes sense. You know, so so when you move around, you actually stimulate the production of fluid in your joints. So you actually grease your joints. Okay, moving around some before you load them up, grease them up. Okay. Ooh, boy, I've got a whole thing there. Before you load them up, grease them up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> See, if we talk enough, Michael, great things will happen. I, I do a lot of these, and 
you just find it over time. Uh-huh. So uh, I want to tell Lorraine, I've got your question. We'll get to it in a couple of minutes. If you have questions or concerns about your own life or that friend of yours, and they have some sort of uh, challenge working at home, we'll also take questions about our friends because, of course, we know that's a stand-in for the people. We were talking about how you reward how you reward your body for doing work at in a sitting position, which is not the way we were built. Are there other things? So we talked about stretching first thing in the morning, waking up our body, getting things moving. Are there things beyond every 10 minutes we should look, look around every 20 minutes, we should walk around? Is there something we should be doing at lunchtime? Or is there something we should be doing at the end of our workday? to reward our body or recalibrate our body back to normal? Wow, uh, that, that, that's a gigantic question and really is gonna be, depend upon the individual. Okay. Um, uh, I would say stay hydrated, that's really important. And that means stay hydrated with water, not, <laughs> not uh, soda. Or okay. soda pop, or uh, vodka, or, or gin. Vodka. Even though vodka looks like water, it's not the same. <laughs> I've been told that. <laughs> really, I know it, it's it's a. How a, much hydration do I need in the course of a day? Oh, I I I am not the person to answer that question. I mean, people. I've heard these things about people saying, you know, drink half your weight in ounces of water. Or eat, yeah, every day, and I think okay, if we think back to early man do you think they were drinking that much water i don't really know the answer to that I mean, I mean, were there were there water fountains in in the jungle i mean you know it's like probably uh, not yeah um so i don't know i mean you you need to there's certain things to to look for i say i would go online and look for signs of dehydration so things like if you go like this and pick up on your skin and it doesn't drop back down you are really dehydrated, but there's there's a uh, try drinking more water if you don't drink much and see how that changes how you feel. You know, it'll find force you to get up more often. Hmm? It'll force people to get up more it's often. Right, it'll get you up more often, absolutely. <laughs> so, what other things are there that we could do beyond hydration? Uh, um. Move around a lot. Move around as much as you can. You know, okay, people ask me, what about a standing desk? It's a okay. great question. You know, or a ball chair, you know, these different things people can do. Do what works for you. Now, I mean, sometimes people get a ball chair and they say, I've been using it for years. I feel great on it. It works wonderfully. And, and somebody else say, I used the ball chair, but I ended up just with the same pain because they sat on the ball chair and then they started to slouch because they got used to it. Um, you know, you need to just find what works for you. Experiment with things. I mean, uh, um, but move a lot. We're designed to move. We're not designed to be still. Okay, that's great advice. I also hear a lot of people standing up to do phone calls. And let's talk about using a phone because okay. I see people all Don't the do time. This. Okay. Speaker phone, headset, whatever. Don't stand there like this with your holding your phone. Why? Because, but think about what I'm doing. I'm in a contracted position, meaning meaning I, I've got my muscles engaged to do this. Um, I'm in effect locking my head to some degree because I'm holding it to the phone, uh, which is going to tighten up these muscles at the uh, base of your skull. Um, and also you're holding a, a transmitter next to your head that's probably not great um, from a, whatever radiation standpoint or who knows what. And I assume this approach is that, probably that, not good either. Probably not a good idea. So yes, he's saying this, this is yes. not a good idea. So I, I can't tell you how many people have come to see me where um, they tell me about where their pain is. And I, I, they lie down, I feel their head. I said, you hold the phone with your head, don't you? And they go, yeah. I say, stop doing that. Get a headset, speaker phone, just stop doing that. Okay. You know, ever, never. Do not do that, period. Not for a second. Don't do it. Okay. And, because, I, and I see where that happens a lot is when people are preparing food. Yeah. Going like this. It's like, put it on speakerphone. Stop right. doing that. Right. Although if you have other people in your home, you can't really be on a speakerphone. 
then get a headset. Right, right. right. I mean, you know, that everybody looks schizophrenic anymore because they walk around talking to nobody. And uh, I mean, not that long ago, that was considered a sign of mental illness. And yep. now it just means you're actually talking to somebody. <laughs> well, Michael, at the risk of going down the wrong highway, I think the definition of mental illness has varied greatly in the recent history. Yes, it certainly has. Listen, you wouldn't take the bait. So Kathleen says headphones are very helpful there. And I agree with her. I, I try. My wife was nice enough to get me wireless headphones, the yeah. uh, yeah, Apple product. It's, it's great because then you don't even have the wire. And I'm a tall guy, so that wire was never long enough. <laughs> so that's really great. Um, and you can also put the phone on your desk and walk around, you know, 100 feet and still be connected, which is really nice. Not to make an ad for Apple, but it is nice to have that flexibility of being untethered. Yeah. So what other things? We've talked about the phone. What about if I've got to do a lot of writing? So for instance, every morning I write for about 20 minutes, I write daily affirmations, things that make me feel good as I go into my day. And I find that when I'm holding my pencil and doing that every morning, I am in pain. In my, in my fingers, in my arm, all the way up here, and sometimes even to, into my head. And I think back to when I was in college and high school, I wrote a whole lot. Am I doing something wrong or is that just? Quick? Well, I think it's, it's, yes, you're doing something wrong. The question is what? Okay. Uh, uh, if somebody came to see me, the first thing I would do is hand them a pen and say, start writing. Let me see okay. what you do. Okay. Uh, uh, I mean, sometimes people just hold the pen too tight. Huh. <laughs> what? I just. Well, that's a technical issue. Okay. That, that, that's how excited I was that you might have had a solution. I knocked my uh, wire right off my, uh, <laughs> right, right off my headphones. Uh, you got to love technology. That, that's why the wireless works so much better because you don't do that. Don't. So, so it, it makes sense to me that it's, that I was holding my pen too tightly, or I guess I have a fairly big hand. Maybe the pen's too narrow. Maybe the pen's too. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so that's, I mean, the, the, I'm the, the pens that I use, they're not expensive pens, but they're pens that have a, I like the way the, the ball rolls across the paper and I like the grip of it. And it's gotta be the right size. It can't be too small because I have big hands too. So uh, um, you gotta find something that works for your hand. If you're having to squirrel your fingers around like this to hold on to this little skinny pen, that's gonna be a problem. Uh, yeah, yes, yeah. so and this is one of the things, uh, Michael is so great. When I've gone to see Michael, he's always, Ask me to replicate whatever the movement is that we think might be causing the trouble. One time I was having some pain when I ran and we, we went through how I walk, how I run. And that's really the beauty of Michael. He's not looking for this one size fits all solution. You know, I'm a hammer and everything's a nail. Michael is very dedicated to finding what the issues are with you and what's unique to you. I think you, you more than anyone else have proven to me that the human body for every single person is a completely different being and that you approach it as, I don't know what's right or wrong for you. Let's figure it out together. Is that a good way to describe what you do when you're in an appointment? Okay. And I would assume, Michael, that you actually, um, could be able to help people now if they had issues, they could contact you and you could do uh, some sort of arrangement with them where they could get help, right? I know we're in Maryland, we're stuck here in our homes for a while, but you could certainly work with people, right? To some, to some extent, yeah. I mean, especially with this kind of technology where I can actually watch them do something. Uh, uh, I hadn't really thought about it that way in terms of the, uh, um, I'm, I'm not a, a as technically connected as you are. Um, uh, but it really helps to be able to see what someone is actually doing. Um, to, uh, I mean, I'll talk to people over the phone and, and make suggestions to them, and I'll get them to put the phone down and say, now, okay, now try this, try that, that right. kind of thing. Um, but it would be even better if I could see what they were doing. If they're actually doing 
under it, it, if I'm communicating well enough that they understand what I'm asking them to do. Right. Because, you know, describing emotion is not easy. A, right. A motion. Yeah. Right. Not emotion, but a motion. Right. Exactly. Exactly. And and I think the other thing is, um, you you really approach it from the the least challenging activity to make a change or the least movement change that we can do to start the ball rolling to see if that works. It's not like radical differences or I've never had you come up with something radical like, you know, contort your body like this every morning for four hours and you will no longer have neck pain. That's not how you operate. No, I, if, if there are so many simple, easy to do things to make life easier. I mean, roll your feet before you get out of bed. That's a really simple thing, but can make your whole day better. And and stress before you get out of bed. Your whole day will be better if you do that. Should I be rolling my feet in my chair before I get up after 20 minutes or 30 minutes? I try it and see what happens. I, I, I haven't thought about the, 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 actually, I think I instinctively move a little bit if I've been okay. sitting for a while before I get up. So just get things moving. And, 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 you know, it's like fidget. Okay. That's a good idea. Well, that's probably why a lot of people do fidget, right? Yeah. It keeps you moving. Keep, because when we don't, when you sit still, especially if you're sitting in a chair where you've got all your weight stacked onto your butt, uh, depending upon, you know, the chair you're sitting in, um, the way you're structured. I mean, uh, I don't have a lot of padding. So if I sit for too long a time on a, on a, on a hard surface in a certain way, it can start pushing on my sciatic nerve. Right. You know, th you know th th there are some things that, depending upon, this will hurt this person, it won't hurt that person. So, uh, uh, like, I always tell people, do not carry your wallet. Don't ever sit on your wallet. Right. Because your wallet is basically pushing on your sciatic nerve. Uh, and it's also distorting your pelvis. They say, oh, well, you know, I don't notice anything. I say, okay, well, put it in your other pocket and sit down. Put it in your other back pocket and sit down on it, and you'll feel it's doing that all the time. Don't sit on your wallet. Now, a lot of these things I say are easy to do. Uh, I should say they're simple. <laughs> uh, simple and easy are not synonymous. I've heard that. Have you? Yeah, I have. I have. That's very nice. I like that. Okay. And we have another comment from Kathleen. She suggested you, Michael, could do exercise or info zooms for your clients. So I'll let, I'll leave I'll leave that with you to think about. Yeah. Uh, so in terms of how our legs are when we're working, I have long legs, so I often will roll my legs up under my chair and then feel pain and go, oh, I can't do that. I might cross my legs as I'm prone to do, which I know is probably bad. I see other people that have their feet so that the toes are down and their feet and their heel is up on their chair. I see people sometimes use a bar stool and they're they're nestled on the bar stool. What's the right thing in a perfect world that is a starting point or a consistent point for our legs and feet so that we're not causing ourselves trouble? Oh, I like that look. That look like Bob, you did it. Bob, there there is no starting point because and and, and I, I don't mean to keep harping on this, but everybody's different. Okay. So I mean the, the position that you take is going to vary what's the, the right position for you can vary greatly depending upon um, uh, the structure, the physical structure of your pelvis. So right. you, you're, you're, it's, it's a shame I just took my uh, plastic pelvis to the office. Uh, but if you uh, think it, that, who would have a plastic pelvis at home? Come on, I, I, I leave mine in the car because it can go either place. Well, mine was in the car, but I took it to the office yesterday before eight o'clock, by the way. Um, uh, that's a Maryland thing. Uh, um, if you think about your pelvis, let's just think about your pelvis as a box and your hip joints are these sockets on the side of the box. Well, is your box really square? Is it more trapezoidal? What's its shape like? If it's more this way, it means that the sockets are pointing more forward. If it's more that way, they're pointing more sideways. That's going to affect what's the best way for you to put your legs. Right. Makes you know, sense. Shoulders are the same thing. If you, you know, we're, we're all different and we're different enough that, you know, I would never say that there's, I mean, the starting point is wherever you are right now. 
Got Whatever it. you're doing right now, okay, that's your starting point. But if you want to try something really different, just go sit on a different chair. I mean, and you, you, you have long legs, so you need to have a higher chair. Right. You that know? is a problem. So, you know, I mean, I have long arms. The, the, when, when I, I went to a, a office supply place and I just wanted to, I was just testing out office chairs. Not that I wanted to get one. I just wanted to feel them. And what I noticed is that every single one, the arms wouldn't go low enough. Right. They all held my, uh, my shoulders up because my arms are too long, you know, relative to the, my torso. So my elbows sit below the top of my pelvic bone. Okay. People that elbows sit about an inch above. Right. Mine sit about an inch below. So arms arms on chairs are too are just too high. Um, everybody's different. So you, you need you need to you need to play with different things. You know your structure is going to matter. So try different kinds of things. Um, uh, you know you know try a padded stool. Okay. Uh, basically, you want something padded. Okay. Makes so sense. I think that's a rule of thumb. We can probably agree on. I mean, I mean, if you sit on a uh, a hard stool, it's going to become a problem because the edge of the stool is going to start biting into the back of your thighs. Sure. Um, uh, but you know, what's the best one for you? Depends on what you're doing. Right. I mean, I mean, are you are you a uh, uh, do you play the stand up bass? I do not. That uh, I, that that was a rhetorical question. Oh, but, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> Then, then you need to have something that will allow you to be in that position and uh, not have to torque your body around, not have to, you, you don't want your, your, the thing you're sitting on to limit you. Makes sense. So, is it, go ahead, I'm sorry. I, 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 I was going to say, is it possible for us to get all this worked out in a way that we could go through a work day working at home? and not be in pain or is that just a dream because our bodies are so uncomfortable with this because it's not how we were built that we should just accept that there's going to be a certain level of pain and then we're trying to minimize it okay so the the let's take away the presumption of pain the presumption that that you know we pain there's no way around being in pain okay okay you since you're working at home it means you can get up whenever you want. Nobody's watching you. Uh, George seems to have a different opinion. That's my dog. Hey. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Makes he, it more real. He gets up whenever he wants. Uh, and, and he looks around the room all the time. <laughs> That's nice. Um, so don't operate under this, the presumption that I don't have time to get up. I've got this work to get done. If I keep getting up, I won't get anything done. And I say, wait a second. If you're sitting there in pain, how much work are you getting done? Right. I think you'll get more done if you're more comfortable. If you're so so, you know, how long does it take to look around the room? You do. You say you don't have time to do that. Right. And and with stretching, you know, stretch for two seconds. You can't tell me you don't have two seconds to stretch. Right. You know, the upside people, benefit. The whole stretches for 15, 30 seconds. That's just nothing. That's just, it's just not true. Two seconds. Just hold a stretch for two seconds and then go back to what you're doing. Just okay. get in the habit of doing that. Don't let your body be stuck. Okay. Got a comment here from Kelly who says, being high strung, constant engagement is a problem for me. I realized this fully during the furlough. It took five days for me to relax, and now I sleep better. It also took a year for me to correct my issues, trying and retrying techniques, like they had to be in a certain order. I am back to just doing the relaxing massage. So I, I think that plays in line with what you're saying, that you know, try what works, and there isn't a set recipe you know if you look at the buzzfeed list of five things to make your home office perfect it doesn't sound like those five things are going to be perfect for anyone yeah you you, you th it's all experimentation you got to find you got to figure it out you know that the uh nobody can say here's what you need to do 
It's because they're not talking to you. They're talking to some non-existent average person. Right. As this unfolds in the coming weeks, Michael, because it could be a fair amount of weeks, maybe longer that we're going to be in our homes working. Mm -hmm. Are there things that we should be looking for in a week or two or three or four signs that we need to address more, more, take a more active approach to all this? Um, well, I guess the, 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 the number one sign that, that we turn to, and it's a sign because it's, it's built into us to be a sign, is pain. Okay. If something starts to hurt, the question is, why does this hurt? Not what do I take to stop the pain? Right. So, so taking an aspirin or ibuprofen when I feel neck pain may be treating a symptom, not the underlying issue. Oh, it's absolutely treating the symptom. So, so if you're getting, if you're starting to get neck pain, then you go, okay, what am I doing, or what am I not doing that is setting me up so that. Uh, this part of my body is now under enough strain or has become static enough that uh, um, fluid's not moving well through it. And my, my system is letting me know there's a problem by uh, virtue of there being pain. So pain is a signal that there's a problem. It's mm -hmm. not going to be ignored. It's like you don't take an aspirin. You, you don't give the fire alarm an aspirin. <laughs> <laughs> you figure out where the fire is and put it out, right? That's really good. I like that. You like that? I do. I do. That was really good. Fire alarm aspirin. Boy, there's a whole new business. Uh, hey, it's a time of innovation and disruption. <laughs> so um, if I'm having sudden insomnia right now, would that be something I might be looking at how my office is set up possibly as a an influencer, I know you can't say definitively, I'm not asking you, but I'm just trying to give people, I think one thing I've learned with working with you over the last couple of years is things that I don't connect together may actually have a connection that I don't see that you're really adept at. So I'm trying to give people the broadest lens with which to look at the big issue. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of reasons right now people might develop insomnia. Uh, but if we're going <laughs> to... If you know, if you if you wonder if your office situation, if your ergonomic situation is contributing, change it and see what happens. Okay. I mean, and it, 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 it's it's the same thing. You know, if you go to the doctor and say, "Doctor, I have this going on." What's the doctor do? So, well, take this, to, you know, and and see what happens. I mean, that that's all you can do. I mean, if you take your car in, your car is doing something weird. You take it in, they. They uh, now they hook it up to an analyzer, but but even then they say, well, I changed the the Gnippy pin and that didn't seem to help it. So I I changed the Wompty Dump and and that didn't seem to help either. So uh, uh, I replaced your engine. No, I mean it, it, it's you try things and see what happens because you don't necessarily know. And and if a car is that complicated, you're infinitely more complicated than a car. Thank you. That's touching. Um, and I assume it should be make one change at a time. Um, in general, if you really want to know what the problem is, make one change at a time. And generally, you're going to see it, see a results very quickly. It doesn't mean you need to make you need to make a one small change in your office and wait two weeks. You should notice a difference within a day. Rule okay. of thumb. Rule of thumb. Okay. No, that's that's great advice because I think sometimes we tend to go oh. I listened to this guy and he told me to do these eight things. So I did the eight things, which could cause additional pain or reduce the pain. But you never know which of the eight actually caused the change. This is why I always suggest do little bits of something. Like, for instance, uh, um, uh, uh, when you move your feet where you're sitting, move it an inch. Uh, and when you're in your car, if you're pushing with the toes, Rather than the ball of your foot, you might start getting uh, a plantar fasciitis. You might start getting pain in the bottom of your foot. 
So rule of thumb is you should be pushing with the ball of the foot on the accelerator, not your toes. If you're pushing with your toes, you need to move your seat forward. Uh, but move it forward a tiny bit, you know, one click or one quick push of the button or whatever your car does. Move it a tiny bit and then see what does that feel like? If that's if you're still pushing your toes, move it forward a tiny bit more. Don't move it forward a foot and go, oh, well, that didn't work. You know, you went too far. You just blow right past the place where you need to be. You're looking for the Goldilocks zone for you. Right. Right. And you have to discover that. Since you brought up small changes, since you brought up cars, Lorraine asked us, uh, she says she's known you since birth. So she wins the sweepstakes for how long, known you the longest. Um, what can you say about driving in the car, seat placement and hands on the wheel? So you talked about seat placement. What about uh, hands on the wheel? Now they say what, nine and three? Are you a believer in what the... Uh, manual well, the reason you don't do 10 and 2, I mean, you know, you and I grew up with 10 and 2. We did. And But the reason they changed 10 and 2 is because of the airbag. Because the airbag goes up and your hands are off and your hands are 10 and 2. Okay. It blows your hands back into your face. I did not know that. That that That's my understanding. Is that the reason they changed that location? And if you look at the new steering wheels in any car that's less than 20 years old, it has the little place there for your hands right there around eight and four. Right. So uh, uh, whereas the old steering wheels, were, which were also bigger because we didn't have power steering, but, uh, but there was lots of places to put your hands. Okay. Um, so hand placement, you know, change it a lot. Don't get stuck in one position. You know, it's just like everything. Move a lot. Right. You know, in, in your office chair, switch it up. You know, people say standing desk, seated, you know, whatever. Switch it up. So in, in the car, um, uh, what you can change in terms of the steering wheel is how far out it is, the telescoping and the tilt. Play with those things. Find what works for you. Don't just, don't just leave it where it is. You know, because I mean, basically all cars have a have a tilt mechanism. They don't all necessarily telescope, but they think they all have a tilt. And there's a there's a, a lever on the usually on the left side of the the steering column. You just pull that out, and it'll tilt for you. And sometimes telescopes. If find play with it, you know, and, and again make small changes to it. Don't go up from here to here and go. Oh well, that didn't work. I'm going back to here. You know, find your Goldilocks spot. Find okay. your Goldilocks spot. Um, in terms of moving the seat forward and back, if you have really short legs, you've got a problem. You need to find a car that works for your body. Okay. You know, the, the angle of the accelerator makes a difference. You know, some people it's going to work better if it's, if it's uh, more vertical. Some people it's going to work better if it's less vertical. What works for your body? You know, as far as, you know, how high do you know, raise the seat up and down and tilt it? Find what works. You know, it, it, it's, it's – and, and go – you, you, when you're looking for that Goldilocks spot, go past it. You, you get little changes, little changes, little changes, little changes. Oh, that's now uh, it, it's too much. Right. You want to go past it and then back off to the nice space. It's what you would when you're getting your eyes checked. Right. They check lenses. They go, okay, that's that's clearer, 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 clearer. Whoa, that's too much. Right. Right. So it's the same thing. Um, with the car, a big thing with the car is your right foot uh, is doing most of the work in terms of the your legs. Uh, your left foot, unless you got a clutch, but even then, the, 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 that's still your right foot's doing most of the work. Move your heel over to the right. So your, your foot's like this, and, and, and you can tell me your foot's like this, but it's highly unlikely. Your foot's more likely, more likely like that. Move your heel over into the hump. Used to be that where the transmission was. Now it's uh, just a, the console or whatever. But move your heel into that hump. Don't hold it tight there, but just move it over. That little bit makes a big difference. You know, you go on a long drive and your your right butt cheek hurts. That'll a lot of that'll go away if you just move your heel over. And you may be only moving it that much. Okay. It's not much, but just move it over that little bit. Every time you hit the brakes, you're going to come back like this. So you got to keep reminding yourself: move it over, move your heel over, move your heel over, move your heel over. That's big. It's a that's a big deal for driving. 
Okay, Michael, we've only got about two minutes left. I wanted to give you a minute or two just to do some shameless self-promotion. How can people get in touch with you and whatever else you want to share? Because you've been so nice to do this with me today and I've picked up a whole lot. So how can people get in touch with you and what kinds of things would you love to talk to them more about? Well, as far as body work right now, you know, we shut down, Linda and I shut down two weeks ago. My wife's an acupuncturist. We share a, uh, we have an office. Uh, uh, we shut down two weeks ago just because we couldn't safely, you know, we're hands-on. You can't socially distance when you're doing hands-on work. Um, uh, I would say, you know, contact me. Is my email address on here somewhere? Uh, uh, not easily. Can you give it to us? I'll put it in here. Okay. But also share it in case someone listens to the replay. Yeah. It's D as in dog, A as in apple, G as in George, E as in Edward, S as in Sam, at earthlink.net. Okay. I've got it there, and we will make it available to people. Um, I want to thank you, Michael. This was great. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. I appreciate your dog contributing when he did and stopping when he did that help. And I look forward to a time when I can get in and actually see you in the office again. Thank you so much. Any closing words from you? Uh, remember to breathe. That is good life advice. That, that's important life advice. Remember <laughs> to breathe. Can't argue with that. Thanks, Kelly. Appreciate your participation as well. And everyone else who contributed, really appreciate your time. Everyone have a great day.